Hey, before the video starts, I just want to make it super clear that this is just a concept and is not real. I've tried to keep the events and dialogue of the route faithful to the Toby Fox style, while also not being a one-to-one -one reskin of Snowgrave. Everything from now on will be presented like a game guide. Also, uh, spoilers, obviously, for both chapters. The branching point for this weird route is very late in the chapter, so it is recommended you do the intro skip and collect the wrist protector to skip dialogue. After that, all you need to focus on is beating every enemy by attacking or running until you reach the ground floor of Card Castle. Never spare. Notes 1. In the beginning section, it does not matter what you do to Lancer or the Ralphse dummy. 2. When Susie joins your party, you may warn enemies about her, but it's not advised, as you still must beat them through violence. 3. It's impossible to beat K-Round through attacking, so you must do the fight as normal. This does not break the non-sparing streak, as the fight ends automatically once the crown falls off. 4. It does not matter how you approach the fight against Lancer and Susie. 5. The Susie vs. Lancer fight will go completely normally. You ride the elevator, Susie joins your party for real, and you step into Card Castle. You can go as far into the castle as you want, as long as you don't trigger the king fight, but the next thing you need to do is fight Jevil. If you don't know how to do that, it has its own guide. You have to beat Jevil by fighting, but there's two details that must be followed. 1. With Susie, you can only attack. Use Fight or Rude Buster, but no items, Defending, or Mercy. 2. The final hit has to be Susie using Rude Buster. Anything else kills the run. If done correctly, Jevil will say, <laughs> What's fun? Now I see, see. You're fast, fast, strong, strong. Sharks you are indeed. But whoa, the prey you seek flees your teeth, and power slips away. Can you catch it? <laughs> Either way, a mischief mischief, a chaos chaos. Lightners, from inside your little cell, take me and do your strongest. <laughs> you got the devil's knife. You got the devil's tail. After this, you must equip both items on Susie. No matter the order, equipping the second will make Susie react with, You sure, Chris? Then you will ride the elevator back to the ground floor, where the Rudin Ranger will be guarding the door as always. Don't avoid this encounter. Once in battle, check Susie's magic menu. You will find a new attack called Devil's Buster, costing 50% TP. The description reads, Obliterates. Red damage to two enemies. Picking Devil's Buster with enough TP will let you choose two enemies to attack. They have to be next to each other. Damage does not increase if you only pick one. The attack looks identical to Red Buster, the exclusive attack used in the King battle. Completely draining an enemy's HP with Devil's Buster, though, turns the entire sprite red milliseconds before the enemy completely disintegrates. This is the only way you can beat enemies from now on. After Susie one-shots the two Rudin Rangers and the battle ends, using a brand new, horrified sprite, Ralse will say, Chris? Susie? What did you do to them? You will then be given the option of responding with either something new or we need to be stronger to beat the king. You must pick something new. In response, Ralse will stare at you, horrified, accompanied only by an ellipsis. But then he snaps out of it, and with a smile, he says, Okay then, Chris. I trust your judgment. Next, you must backtrack to the Great Door, the earliest point you can still access. There you will find a singular Rudin. Slaying it will lock you into the run. After doing so, you must work your way back through the entire game without using the shortcut doors, obliterating every enemy. You will encounter more enemies than you originally did, but you will not see Clover or Sea Round, and NPCs will be absent. After only a few rooms, enemies will begin to run away from you. After every battle, below the amount of money and experience you earn, it will tell you how many encounters are left. This information is in all caps, leading some to believe it's Jevil talking.
Visiting Shom on your march back to the castle will uncover slightly altered dialogue. Selecting We Won, they will say, You defeated him? You really defeated him? I see. He helped you defeat others, too. But Jevil was only a taste of what you'll face from now on. One day soon, you too will realize the futility of even your most drastic actions. <laughs> At that time, feel free to come back here. I'll make you tea, and we can toast to the end of the world. Once you make your way back to the long path leading to Card Castle, you should find it filled with Rudin Rangers and Head Hathies. If you do not, you missed one or more enemies, and you need to backtrack to find them. You will find the castle doors locked, so there is no other way to progress. If you've already done it, every enemy in the room will rush towards you, starting a battle with 15 enemies, five rounds of three. Every round is some combination of Rudin Rangers and Head Hathies, both of which you can one-shot. However, Devil's Buster needs to be used at least twice every round, costing 50 TP each time, so the fight will take a while. After battle, snarling, Susie will say, Hell yeah, Chris! Let's find some more! Ralse will follow this with an ellipsis and a saddened expression. Entering the castle, you will find the first and second floors completely empty, and the basement unchanged. On the third floor, you will have to fight six head Hathies. The fourth floor will be empty, and Clover's room will be locked. Trying to open it will give you the text, The door is locked. You hear the faint thump of hiding music. Throughout the entire castle, you will encounter no obstacles, no K-Round, and no rules card. Entering his shop, though, you will find Lancer. Talking to him, he will say, Hey, clowns! Dad locked the castle down, and Lesser Dad locked himself in my room, so I'm playing with these worms. They dig holes, too! Oh, before you go, Dad said some lightners were thrashing people up. You'd better watch out, they sound scary. Selecting buy, you'll find everything costs zero dollars. When you grab something, Lancer will say, it's on the mouse. After stocking up, progress to the king. Lancer will not show up in the cutscene. Instead, the cloaked king will say, Lightners, my kingdom has grown silent. Was it not enough to leave us behind? You felt it necessary to, what, put us out of our misery? Fools, we have found true purpose without you. And, by the knight's will, I shall shatter your heart. After which Susie will reply, And just who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> to my people, I am a hero. To you, I'm the bad guy. Then the battle will commence, playing out almost as normal, with altered details. Attacks will be stronger, but not especially so. The dialogue will change a little, adding references to your massacre. And finally, in the act menu, you can only talk as Rousey, and a Susie option will be missing entirely. You can approach this fight however you like. The battle ends the same as always, the king saying, Enough is enough. But after his little monologue, when the party puts away their weapons, Susie does not, even after Ralsei's encouragement. She says, You're the bad guy, huh? Okay. Then you won't mind me treating you like one. Her axe begins to glow. But before she can slay the kneeling king, Ralsei sings a lullaby. Hey, the hell are you doing, dude? You're making me... Uh... Making... Me... Then she falls asleep. The king does, too. After a pause, Ralse speaks. Chris? I think you'd better go seal the fountain. Before they wake up. Interacting with Susie will simply say, She's asleep. Interacting with the king will say, He's asleep. Talking to Ralsei, he will say, 
Go seal the fountain, Chris. We won't get a better opportunity. Proceeding to the fountain, Chris will seal it without any dialogue or music. When you return to the light world, the clattering in the closet will not happen. Instead, you'll hear several echoing footsteps before the lights turn on, revealing Chris by the light switch and Susie asleep against the right wall. You can choose to wake her up or simply leave. If you wake her up, the dialogue will be nearly identical to a normal route, except when she asks to go back tomorrow, she'll say it with aggressive enthusiasm rather than the gentle, genuine tone she used before. Everything in hometown is the same, and the ending is the same. Taking this route has certain effects on Chapter 2, the biggest being that every enemy you slayed in Chapter 1 will be missing from your town, and the tone of the remaining characters will be less upbeat. The king will refuse to say anything to you, but be gone. After that, there are a number of other changes. After the first battle in Cyberworld, when the other two werewires come in, Susie will use Devil's Buster on them before Ralsei manages to pacify them. The dialogue for the rest of the cutscene is practically the same, but Ralsei is more hesitant and reserved, while Susie uses more aggressive talk sprites, altering the tone. When playing the arcade machine with Queen, if you spam the same button ten times in a row, you can end the virtual combat early by breaking the controls, showing that Susie has grown both magically and physically stronger than she is in a normal route. Due to the almond milk, Sweet Captain Cakes remain invincible. This fight is forced to go as normal. Because you're much stronger than you should be, the roller coaster birdly fight can go significantly faster than usual. Furthermore, he uses stronger attacks and altered dialogue, showing that he notices something wrong, or at least that you're stronger than he expected. Birdly survives the encounter, though, as all damage goes to his cart, not him. In the trash zone, when Susie hurts her knee, Ralsei does not heal it. Instead, he helps Susie walk to the next room, where he actually says that he and Susie should go off together using Susie's knee as an excuse. Until a couple rooms later, when you get Noelle in your party, you cannot slay any enemies. The rest of the changes listed will be to the Snowgrave, or Weird, route. If you don't know how to do this, it has its own guide. Surprisingly, when you meet back up with Susie and Ralsei after the Birdly fight, not only will Susie's knee be healed, but she'll also have her ultimate healing. Even more surprisingly, the healing will actually be good, a little better than Ralsei's due to her level and Jevil's items. It still costs 100% TP though, so in practice, Ralsei's is still better. When fighting Mouse Wheel, because the enemy is actually made up of many enemies, every Devil's Buster hit will cause several red disintegration animations to play. It's possible to see your maximum health go up during this battle. In the Peepus room, Susie will begin to stomp and slash at the Peepus like how she smashes the pots in the normal route. Slowly, she'll clear a wide path to the room's exit. Running into one yourself will start the one-turn Peepus battle as usual. After she goes into Noelle's room, Susie never actually comes out. You simply regain control and begin to leave, causing Ralsei to hesitantly follow you. In Susie's absence, Ralsei is the one who invites Queen to your town. At the end of the Spamton Neo fight, when you're calling out for help, Noelle's option actually doesn't work either. After Spamton says the line, What's she gonna do? Make me an ice cream? She doesn't come in. Instead, it's your turn again. You call Noelle three more times without any attacks or dialogue from Spamton. After the third, the descriptive battle text reads, Try someone else. Checking act again reveals Susie's icon again. Selecting it, Spamton says, What's that? Run out of options? Going back to your old favorites? <laughs> His laugh is cut off by Susie talking from off screen. Damn it, Chris, the hell are you doing? 
Noelle won't stop babbling about your voice in her head. I don't know how you're calling us from so far, but if you have a job to be done, just call me, got it? After a moment of silence, Chris seals the fountain, and everyone, except Birdly, wakes up, the rest of the ending going as normal.